Hi, it's been, it's a um, Sunday, so it's been 11 days since my operation. And Fergus, my friend who's come up today, is going to ask some questions about what it's like having a high water amputation. Okay. Right. Um, <laughs> how's it feel about having a leg? Um, it, well, the, yeah, the weirdest thing is it feels like I still have a leg. So in, in my mind, well, I know I don't, but in my mind, I can still feel it there. And I think that's helped a bit with um, sort of, I don't know, coping with it almost, because it doesn't feel like I've completely lost it. So I think that, that feels, that it's helped, it's definitely helped. But what, what sometimes it goes in positions that I can't control, that are a little bit uncomfortable, and, and then, it, then it's hard sometimes, but... but not, not really. Not. So, but it's been good. So, like, what, what do you mean? Like, what, where is your your phantom leg now? At the moment, it's like so. If you can imagine, um, sort of my leg going down here, and then at the knee bending back, and like I'm sitting on my foot. So at the moment, I feel like, like my it, foot's yeah, under yeah. my yeah. So I feel like it's in that position. So if it's in a weird position, does it feel like painful? No, not not painful when it's just feeling like the normal sort of leg sensation. It's not like because I'm sitting here and I'm getting pins and needles. Um, but like sometimes I feel like um, like the leg. I don't know. Sometimes the feeling that I have a leg almost is just really really strong, like stronger than it would be like a normal leg. Like it like. Yeah, I don't know, like, a lot of my attention is taken up by the fact that this, there's a feeling here, if, if that makes any sense. Um, and then, then it, it's not, I wouldn't do, ever describe it as painful when it's like that. It's just more really, really uncomfortable. There's no pain. But sometimes I get a pain, set, like, a separate pain from just the sensation of having the leg. And that, that can feel like, sort of like an aching in my sort of thigh. Um, or sometimes I get in my foot, and it tends to be on the sole of my foot, like these stabbing pains. And you can tell when I get those, because it tends to go through me, and my body tends to sort of, um, I don't know, sort of curl up with it. it it's not very nice. So, so how often do you get the, the bad pains with it? In my foot? Yeah. That, that, like, it, it depends. I can go for hours without them. And then sometimes they, they'll, like, I can spend, like, an hour with them occurring quite frequently. And, they, and it tends, when they happen, it tends to be like a pulse, like it, like it hits, and then there'll be a break, and then there'll be another pulse. And it's, it isn't nice. Um, what I found out recently, though, is that if I move my foot that I actually have, um, if I start moving that, like, flexing the toes and moving the foot around that, that helps with the pain. Um, and then obviously I'm on a, a lot of drugs to help me deal with the pain as well. And, and they don't tend they don't tend to they tend to sort of dull the sensation of the leg. Um, and they tend to dull that, that piercing sort of sharp pain that I get in my foot. So um what, you said how like you can still imagine a leg feel like a leg better. Yeah. Is it like weird like in the morning when you wake up? Do you feel like yeah. do you forget you haven't Yeah, yeah, like in the in the morning when I wake up it's yeah, like when I'm in that sort of half awake, half asleep state. I have to almost remind myself that that it's not there. which can be hard sometimes. Um especially like when I get an itch or something, and then you think, oh, I need to itch my leg, and then I'm like, oh, you know, that leg's not there anymore. That, that, that's when I tend to realise. Or, well, when I'm not really, like, when I'm tired in the evening, I tend to forget that, and I think, when I'm in a weird position like I am now, I tend to think, oh, I need to move my leg out, unless I get pins and needles, and then I remember, like, oh, that leg's not there. So... That, that can be quite difficult, but it's not it's okay. So it's day 11, how like much movement have you been able to do with the physio's help and stuff? Um, well, I the most I've done now, well I'll, say it's, I'll tell you where I started from, I sort of started from getting out of bed this side and walking around and getting back in this side, 
and that I did that on day five, and my surgeon was here with my physios, and they were just really impressed with what what I'd done because, um, like the surgeon was like, we've never seen someone walk like that day five after this operation, and apparently a lot of people who have been in bed for five days straight on their back tend to get up and faint, and I hadn't done that, so so yeah, I think everyone was really impressed, and then since then I, I've. Um, been able to get up and out this room and walk down the hallway and back and all the nurses and everyone saw because it's walking past the nursing station and they were just like oh, you're, you're walking so well um, and that that was really that was really nice to feel like to hear them sort of yeah how does the how does the feel to walk like how does it feel to you what's the kind of key differences obviously for us um well, because obviously I was on two crutches for a long time after my first operation. So I, I've kind of got used to that walking with crutches feeling. And and with my first operation, I wasn't allowed to put any weight on the uh, my right leg for like three months afterwards. Um, but, but yeah, the key difference is, is you've got the, you've still, even though you're not allowed to put any weight through that leg, you've still got the weight of that leg on that side. And, no, I haven't. So my sort of balance is is yeah my sort of what do you call it um, centre of gravity is has been moved shifted. So yeah, that that's the main difference. Um, yeah, I, I I can't say I really notice when I'm walking. Uh, I feel a bit more unsteady. So even now I've got up a few more times and my confidence is building any time I go anywhere I still make sure someone's with me or call a nurse because every now and again I get this wobble like I'm going to fall and I feel like I do need someone there. Um, the other, like how it feels with my sort of phantom leg, it, it tends to feel like it's curled up at the back, um, so like it's bent at the knee right up to the bum if you can imagine that. So kind of what you would do if you were pretending you only, you know, you couldn't put your leg down. Um, so it feels like that, and I think that's when, after I've done the walking and get into bed, I th think that's why my leg feels like it is bent underneath me, because I've been walking around and not, that's where it's been. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm not, I, it's not a massive difference when walking. Standing's obviously a bit more difficult, because... Yeah, we've got that leg supporting you. Um, so I guess it is going to mean at the moment, like sitting a lot, a lot more. I'm not going to stand for a long time, and but hopefully I'll get good arm muscles. <laughs> so that, actually, if you want to show the camera, you're like, you want that new muscles? Yeah. Oh no, I've got a, I've got a line in that arm, but. Check <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Do you want me to like don't push them up a bit or something? <laughs> and compared to fags? Oh, I haven't got anything. <laughs> no, Lizzie's definitely winning. Yeah. But look at those <laughs> bruises as well. That's from just lines. I'm trying to put lines in, um, arterial line, and then then they're not um not um like when they're checking it out, not putting enough pressure on it. It's, it's done that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. What's your What's your aims for next? For, <laughs> for next video blog entry. Okay. Well, that's tomorrow. So I haven't, I haven't <laughs> got um, <laughs> haven't got that many aims. Um, to get out of bed <laughs> more um, would be. I was planning on doing my nails tomorrow whilst. You know, something to do, keeping busy. Uh, I don't know about no worries about that. Like I will, because it's been the weekend now, so I haven't seen the physio for two days. So seeing the physio, the one that I haven't fallen out with. <laughs> um, surprise, um, surprise. But <laughs> she was trying to make me do something that <laughs> I couldn't do. Like I knew I couldn't do it because I've tried it, and I was telling her that, but she wasn't listening to me. Um, which is extremely frustrating if you've ever been in a hospital and you're telling people something. And, like, it's, it's frustrating in real life, but in hospital when you have very little control 
over what happens. Like, it, it, yeah, it's hard when you're telling people something and, and then they don't believe you or they don't listen. It, it's really hard. So, For all the viewers, Lizzie can be rather demanding at times, though. <laughs> but that, that's, yeah, mm-hmm. her not listening to me made me very angry with her. Um, so, and she wouldn't compromise either. So I was trying to compromise, and she wasn't. Yeah. So I, yeah, so I can't deal with people like that. One physio down, one to go. Yeah.